When you upgrade your mountain bike, you're left with a bunch of stock parts and it can be really tempting to sell those extra parts to try and get some cash to either recoup the amount of money you've spent upgrading your bike or to be able to afford that next upgrade. But in today's video, I'm gonna tell you guys why I don't think you guys should sell those parts because the number one tip I can give any of you guys out there when upgrading your bike is to never sell your stock parts again. Let me explain why. This is my Fuel EX7. So I bought this bike knowing that I was gonna completely upgrade this thing. It is the base model Fuel EX. This is the Gen 6 for you guys that aren't familiar with Trek brand. This is the newest 2023 model that'll probably carry on for the next couple years. I threw, you know, every kind of upgrade that I wanted on this bike. I got these Prelli Scorpion tires. With, these are the Enduro Pro Wall tires, so nice beefy tires. Did the tubeless conversion with the Trail One valve stems. I even got the rear specific Pirelli tire back right here in the rear. Added a 200 mil rotor in the back, so you can see that 200 mil rotor adapter right there on those TRP brakes. Got this thing stopping nice. I threw on some PW component pedals. I bought a, a stock shock off of somebody else and threw a sticker on there. That person should not have sold me their stock shock. I'll get to that more here in a minute. I upgraded the dropper post, so I got a 200 mil PNW dropper post on here. Got that SDG saddle, those little orange touches throughout. Got those PNW grips on there. The PNW loam dropper post lever. Got the Trail One Crockett bars, the Rockville stem with those oil slick bolts on there. And I was left, you know, with the OEM tires, the XR5 Team Issue tires, the RockShox 35 RL Gold Fork. I got the Fox Float DPS shock, you know, the stock grips, dropper post bars, dropper post lever, stem, that old rotor, the valve stems I took off, the seat. So I easily could have sold these parts and recouped some of that money that I spent on this bike because this Fuel EX right back here is about $3,200 stock. And then I've put over like $2,000 worth of upgrades on this thing, even with the discount codes I get through my YouTube channel. And you guys, make sure you guys check the uh, video description down there because I always try and include discounts for you guys as well. Trail One, really awesome company, and they've given a pretty good discount for my viewers and subscribers. So definitely jump down in the discounts, try and save you guys a little bit of money. But what I've realized in the past, getting back to my story a little bit, is those stock components, keeping those things, they're way more valuable than the little bit of money I would get selling them. You see, prior bikes that I've had, my Trek Slash that I had before this bike, I upgraded it and I sold all those stock parts and I used that money. I'm not sure I understand. Stop, watch. And I used that money to fund those upgrades. But eventually, time came around like it always does when I was ready to sell that bike to move on to the next ride. And I quickly realized that now, not only was I gonna be losing money on the value of the bike, but I was gonna be losing money on the value of all those upgrades because people aren't gonna pay you for all those upgrades you put on your bike. So like I said, this Fuel EX7 back here, $3,200, I put well over $2,000 worth of upgrades into this thing, so let's just say like $5,300 I have into this bike. Nobody's paying me $5,300 for a Fuel EX7. People would rather go buy a higher end bike for that price. So I am so glad that I kept all these stock parts because of what I'm able to do is sew the stock parts back on that Fuel EX7 right there. And then after I have this Fuel EX back in stock configuration, I'll try and sell it for the best price possible. And I'll still have all these custom parts I upgraded it with to either throw towards my next bike build or be able to resell those to get a little bit money to go towards the next part that I actually want. 
And sure, there are a couple things like this rear shock is a 210 by 55, so it might not fit on my next bike. The dropper post is a 34.9 diameter, so that might not fit on my next bike, but I could always resell those to get a little bit of extra money. There's things like this fork that'll definitely fit on the next bike that I got, especially, you know, another little tip that I have for you guys is when you cut your steer tube on this fork, see how I have that headset spacer above the fork? That's because I like to keep this steer tube as long as I possibly can. So either A, it'll fit on the next bike that I wanna put it on, or B, I'll be able to resell it to somebody else and I know that it'll fit on their bike as well. So I'm gonna take this bike back in my workshop over there, start stripping all these custom parts off it, get this thing ready to sell. If you guys wanna find out why I'm selling this bike, I promise you it's for a really good cause. You guys will have to click on that video right there to find out why. If you guys have learned anything from this video, please share it with a friend. If you guys completely disagree with me, leave a comment below. Let's talk about it, because it's all about getting you guys stoked to go ride and have some fun, people.